So hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be attempting to platinum the forest. This is a game that's been on my radar for a while, and due to Sons of the Forest being recently released into beta, I thought it was finally about time to give this game a go for myself. Jumping right into the trophies, I had earned 1 out of the 38 a few years back. This trophy was nothing special, as it was just for sleeping with another player, and as you'll see, I did this multiple times throughout this video. With only a single trophy earned, I still had to grab the remaining 37, and while that sounded pretty doable, it turned out that this game was a bit buggier than I originally thought. What I didn't realise when starting this Platinum was that pretty much every single trophy in this game is glitched to some extent. You can find countless posts online of people looking for help regarding their unearned trophies, and due to this, I had pretty much no choice but to split this Platinum up into three parts. Single player, multiplayer, and creative. Creative is never usually a game mode I touch because I love earning trophies the way they're supposed to be earned. But honestly, without this game mode, this Platinum would not be possible, and you'll soon understand why. If you've not played this game before, then of course, major spoilers ahead, but I think it's finally about time we start earning this Platinum. The game starts off with a guy kidnapping your child called Timmy. The main task in the forest is to find where Timmy has been taken and save him before it's too late. Before we can do that though, there's a few single player specific trophies that need to be earned. We start off by looting what's left in this plane, grabbing some meds and snacks before picking up some sticks to craft a spear. There is a trophy for crafting every single item in the game called Crafty, but this was not the main focus straight off the bat. In order to unlock our first trophy, this spear must end the life of a harmless rabbit. At first, I actually couldn't find a single rabbit in this area, but eventually, I caught one in the corner of my eye. I ran as fast as I could, using every chance I had to stab the spear into its skull. I chased it down to the beach, threw the weakest spear attack the entire forest has ever seen, and actually managed to land the throw. The next task on the list was to build a gazebo for the trophy, you should be looking for Timmy. Since it was still day one, the enemies were not really that much of an issue, and only become more hostile past day seven or so, depending on how many enemies you've dealt with. This meant I could chop down a few trees in peace and finish up the gazebo for the trophy. I then decided to blow up a few trees, repair a hunting shelter I had previously built while putting up the gazebo, and start preparing for the trophy Bite Me. This trophy requires you to eliminate a shark, which at the time sounded pretty challenging. My best and probably only option to earn this trophy would be to build a boat and sail out into the ocean. I also decided that instead of using a spear, I would use arrows to attack the shark from afar. After grabbing a few feathers, I crafted some arrows and made my way out to the deep blue sea in search of a shark. After sailing around for a little bit, the shark eventually showed its face. And while I expected a big commotion and my raft to be teared apart, all I got was a peaceful shark that didn't really put up much of a fight. After earning the majority of the single player only trophies, I decided to attempt one of the longer trophies in the game called Trophy Hunter. This trophy requires you to eliminate 11 different animals and display their heads on a stick for the whole forest to see. Now, this is one of those trophies that can be pretty bugged and it's a lot safer if completed in a single sitting to actually guarantee the trophy can be earned. So I quickly got to work, grabbing a katana from the dead cave and eventually finding my first of 11 victims running between the grass. This time around, I showed no mercy and the rabbit was dead instantly. After grabbing its head, I proudly placed it on display in the gazebo. The second head was pretty easy to find as well because the beach right next to the gazebo had a few sharks just lying around, waiting to be decapitated and placed onto a stick. For the third head, I just had to stay very still in my gazebo and wait patiently for a seagull to spawn in, eventually displaying its head for everyone to see. After a bit of research, I found out that this trophy can be obtained by placing a head on a stick anywhere in the world, rather than just at your base. So after leaving the gazebo and strolling for a little bit, I found another animal I needed for the trophy. I placed his head down on the ground while I chopped up a few trees, but once I finished setting everything up, the lizard's head had despawned. Luckily, this was a hot spot for lizards and I quickly found another one, making sure to hold onto its head the entire time before placing it onto a stick. Allegedly, this spot was also the spawn point of a few other animals like a raccoon and a squirrel, but after waiting a little while, all I could find was a single deer. So after placing its head on the wall, I continued exploring, grabbing a crocodile's head, a boar's head, a squirrel's head, and a raccoon's head, before making my way to Geese Lake in order to grab one final head for the trophy. I had heard numerous issues regarding this head, which is why I decided to leave it till last, as it would take the most amount of time. Essentially, the geese will fly in from one direction and then proceed to fly out of another. While they're flying out, you need to shoot one down with an arrow and pick up his head. 
This is unfortunately the only area where geese are found, so I had no choice but to sit and wait before eventually getting my chance at shooting one down from the sky. I walked to the correct spot, readied my bow, and of course, I missed my shot. So, I turned around and walked pretty far in a single direction, before returning back to the lake in order to make the geese respawn. However, when I returned to the lake, the geese were nowhere to be seen. I came to the conclusion that maybe they only spawn once per day, and returned back home to grab some more feathers and craft some more bows. Once returning back to the lake the next day, however, the geese had yet again not respawned, and at this point, I was pretty confused as to what I could actually do in this situation. I decided to sleep once again, as maybe that would fix the problem, but as you may have already guessed, the geese were still not respawning. I scoured Google for anything relating to this glitch before coming across one of the only videos I could find by Jensen Gaming, who mentioned that by grabbing the rebreather, you can emerge from the cave under the lake and it forces the geese to respawn. This was literally my only hope at achieving this trophy, so I did exactly what was said, grabbing the rebreather before exiting the cave, which to my surprise, actually respawned the geese, saving me from having to restart. I got straight back into position and readied my bow, waiting for the geese to leave the lake. After getting one of my crosshairs, I fired, and, of course, I missed again. But this wasn't the end, though. Luckily for me, the remaining geese in the lake also decided it was time to leave. This is my last chance at grabbing the trophy, so I had to make a count. With two arrows left in my inventory, I readied my bow and waited patiently before taking the shot. Now that the hardest part of this single player run was finally out of the way, all that was left to do was to finish the game and unlock creative mode. Finishing the game is actually a surprisingly simple task, as there are only three items needed, and since I had already grabbed the rebreather, only the keycard and the climbing axe stood in my way. I decided to grab the keycard first and headed straight into cave 6. After making my way through a few enemies, I eventually reached the armsy guarding this keycard, and I figured I could probably take him down on my own, which didn't really go too well. In the end, I decided to just grab the keycard in the pile of dead bodies and make a run for it. With the keycard now secure, all that was left to do was to reach the ledge cave for the climbing axe. This cave wasn't as hard as the last one, and with only two mutants blocking the axe, I made quick work of them before picking up the final item that was needed. Now that I had all three items, all that was left to do was to make my way down to the sinkhole. While there are many good ways to get to the bottom, the easiest way is to backtrack through the cave we were just in and then scale down the side of the wall with relative ease. It is here that we can use the rebreather to swim through and eventually use the keycard to open the door. After walking around the facility for a little bit, we eventually come across the cafeteria. It is here that we can unlock two more trophies. One for spending money on the vending machines and another one for drinking coffee out of this machine. We can also grab the last single player specific trophy here for setting off the sprinklers, which I did by setting an armsy on fire with a burning arrow. Eventually, we find Timmy and the artifact states that in order to save his life, another life must be sacrificed. So I pressed on in order to find a sacrifice worthy of reviving Timmy. While I knew there was a boss fight at the end of this game, I did not anticipate it to be as hard as it was, and I arrived severely unprepared. The only thing I could do was craft a load of spears using my sticks and consistently chuck them at her while evading as many attacks as I could. This was actually going pretty well, but after a few hits, I died pretty much instantly and decided to look around before giving this boss fight another go. Right next to the boss fight room is conveniently a pretty stacked room of supplies. This allowed me to find enough resources to craft three sticky bombs, and upon returning to the boss fight, this happened. With the sacrifice now able to take place, I took the girl back to the artifact and placed her inside. However, after all my hard work, the sacrifice was still not enough, as the artifact required a living person rather than a dead one. Once grabbing the keycard off this girl's corpse, we can grab one of the few remaining trophies at this playthrough, for drinking out of a water cooler with a lawyer's head trapped inside. After riding this elevator up to some beautiful scenery, we get to pick between saving Timmy or breaking the cycle. Essentially, in order to find another living sacrifice, another plane must crash on the island, and an innocent child from that crash will be used in order to save Timmy. 
From my understanding, this is exactly what happened to our plane, and Timmy was used as a sacrifice in order to save another child. I chose the option to continue the cycle, saving Timmy and watching hundreds of innocent passengers fall to their doom. This unlocks the final trophy of the playthrough called Survive the Forest. More importantly though, this unlocks creative mode, which is actually the only reason this platinum is even obtainable. There's a trophy in this game called Don't Save the Forest, which requires you to chop down a thousand trees. Now, in an ideal situation, this would be earned over time and would probably unlock towards the end of your playthrough. Of course, this is not an ideal situation and the trophy is extremely buggy. The only way to achieve this trophy is to chop down a thousand trees in a single sitting, which is pretty much impossible unless you grab three other people and grind it out for numerous hours without turning the game off. This means that for the average player like myself, the only way to achieve this trophy is to hop into a creative world and blow myself up over and over again. After nearly two whole hours of blowing myself up, the trophy finally popped. Now, because of how bugged this trophy was, it got me thinking. And after doing a bit of research, I decided I would also achieve both Bad Father for surviving 100 days and Vegan for completing the game without killing any animals in a creative world as well. This was definitely not the original plan jumping into this game, but I was just too worried that spending a minimum of 45 hours on Bad Father and at least a few cruel hours on the vegan trophy would inevitably result in two glitched and unobtained trophies, which, you know, I'm not sure about you guys, but was definitely not something I was willing to attempt. I started with the Bad Father trophy, as this one was going to take the longest of the two. In order to make sure this trophy had the best chance of actually being achieved, I came to the decision to complete this trophy in a single sitting. Essentially meaning I left my PS5 on for 45 hours without turning it off once. While this has probably caused irreversible damage to my PS5, it was all worth it in the end, as the trophy did indeed pop and I could finally move on to the next trophy. To earn the vegan trophy, I loaded up my final creative world and got to work grabbing the keycard and the rebreather. I decided not to grab the climbing axe this time because there's only one part that it's needed for and it's pretty easily skipped. So with the keycard and the rebreather in my possession, I jumped all the way down the sinkhole and made my way to the facility door. I made quick work of the boss fight before choosing yet again to crash another plane, earning me the vegan trophy. Now that all the creative trophies had been dealt with, it was finally time to head into multiplayer. To earn the first multiplayer specific trophy, we had to use the trading system. In this game, anything you put in a metal tin can be gifted to another player. And after gifting a dead guy's arm, I got a trophy. We spent the first night building a little base and cooking some limbs before waking up and finding cassette tape 5 on a beach. We then found cassette tape 1 in the yacht and decided to sleep here in order to pop another trophy. After exploring the keycard cave, we grabbed the map and then the compass, which unlocked this trophy. In the same cave, there's a little side path which takes you to an upgraded axe. Just like the trophy Be Nice, where you gift food, there's another trophy called Be Extremely Nice, where you gift a player a weapon. There's a bunch of miscellaneous trophies that I'll quickly run through now as they weren't super hard, like this one for catching a fish with a spear. Or this one for turning lizard skin into armor and wearing it. There was even a trophy for literally just placing the longest wall possible and not even being required to build it. There's another quick one for smashing a mutant's face in. And finally, reviving a player 10 times, which we eventually came to the realization had to be done in a single session. Due to the fact that we had revived each other countless times already, and it still took 10 revives for the trophy to pop. At this point in the game, we started building our permanent base. The location we decided on was the beach, because the boat allowed us to sleep without being swarmed by mutants, and the water allowed us to get away safely since the mutants can't really swim. Of course, this didn't stop us from getting constantly swarmed by every single mutant in the game, which delayed the base progress significantly. After a few days of cutting down trees, building walls and sleeping in the yacht, the base was finally complete, minus a few gaps in the wall of course, but this was on purpose because we still had to build a garden and place three different types of seeds in order to unlock another trophy. The next trophy we went for was called Choppy Chop and it requires you to chop off 50 body parts. This was yet again another trophy that needed to be done in a single sitting. So now that the base was practically complete, we got to work chopping up 10 bodies. And due to the fact we already had daily swarms of enemies attacking our base, it actually wasn't too hard to achieve this in a single sitting. I should have combined this trophy with the trophy Major Cannibalism, as it requires you to eat 12 arms and 12 legs, or in other words, 6 bodies. But because I was worried it would bug out, I decided to get both these trophies separately. 
so I could keep track of how many enemies I had eliminated and how many enemies I had eaten to correctly achieve both trophies. After eliminating a few more mutants and eating their limbs for dinner, the trophy eventually popped. Also at this point, I had collected 10 marigold and 10 aloe vera due to how much time we had spent in the forest cutting down the trees. And this allowed me to grab the trophy natural path. We ventured into one of the main cannibal villages and found some dynamite, which allowed us to grab the trophy for exploding six fish in a session with another player. At this point in the game, our base was pretty much ready to go. It was nothing crazy, but it was enough protection for us to start moving on to more demanding trophies. So we got to work, heading all the way down to the bottom of cave seven for the pedometer. This is an item that tracks your steps, and once the step counter reaches 50,000, it will eventually unlock a trophy. This also marked off cave seven as being fully explored alongside cave five, which I unfortunately forgot to record, but it's the cave where you can grab the rebreather. While deciding to explore each cave, we also decided to find all passengers too, as this would hopefully cut down the time by attempting two trophies at once. After finding all the passengers outside of cave 2, we headed in, finding more passengers before finding the first of six toy pieces. Just like the cassette tapes, these are scattered all over the map and are required for a trophy that will progressively be earned as we explore the caves. We explored cave 2 a little bit longer before the hanging cave was crossed off our to-do list. We then ventured into cave 3, grabbing the second toy part, picking up cassette tape number 4, and finding a chainsaw before eventually crossing the wet cave off our to-do list. Cave 1 was up next, and after finding a few more passengers, we grabbed another toy part, burned a few mutants, and picked up the katana to cross the cave off the list. Cave 6 was the last cave needed to clean up the few remaining passengers I had missed, and after stealing their watches, the trophy was finally mine. There was nothing else to do in this cave, so we just explored until the lawyer cave was crossed off our to-do list. We then explored Cave 4, grabbing cassette tape number 2, before crossing this one off the to-do list. Same with cave 9, called the ledge cave. And then eventually reaching cave 10, where we burned this big guy to a crisp and grabbed the final cassette tape for the trophy, Gabe Fan. This also allowed us to cross the waterfall cave off our to-do list, leaving us with only one cave remaining, called the sinkhole cave. Now, this was an error on my behalf, but I thought the sinkhole cave was actually the final cave at the end of the game, so we decided to grab all the other trophies first before entering this cave. We decided to backtrack in order to collect the remaining pieces of Timmy's toy. We missed two in cave seven, one right at the entrance and one a little bit deeper into the cave in the middle of this really thin ledge. The final part of Timmy's toy was actually all the way back at cave five where you can pick up the rebreather. So after making our long journey all the way back, we could grab the final toy piece and then the trophy good father. Due to all this exploring, I'd actually come pretty close to 50,000 steps. And after playing around with the base a little more, the trophy eventually popped while I was eliminating these babies. The next trophy we decided to go for was You Are A Fun Guy, which requires you to eat six different mushrooms and you'll be right in thinking this should be done in a single session. Due to how this game works, you can't actually pick up mushrooms without eating them. So in order to store them in your inventory, you need to craft a pouch. This requires two rabbit fur and after eventually hunting down my last rabbit, I crafted the pouch. With this pouch, I can now collect eight of each mushroom. But more importantly, I could store these mushrooms in my inventory without eating them, which meant I could save before eating them in case the trophy bugged for any reason. The main hot spot for mushrooms is at the top corner of the map. And once we got there, we instantly found four out of the six mushrooms that we needed, which was a great start. And then a little while of exploring the surrounding area, we found a Liberty Cap mushroom. All that was left to find was a deer mushroom. And let me tell you, this was not an easy task. We traveled all over the map for these mushrooms before getting extremely lucky and finding a single deer mushroom on the outskirts of Geese Lake. We set up a temporary base in order to save our game, just in case the trophy bugged. After eating the mushrooms one by one, the trophy actually popped first time. The only difficult trophy left was called Crafty, and this was for crafting every single item in the game. I chose to leave this one till last, as it allowed us to grab all the resources needed over time. So technically doing it this way kind of eliminates the difficulty as you're always going to be grabbing skins and sticks as you survive in the forest. This trophy has to be done in a single sitting, but it's probably the most broken trophy other than don't save the forest because there are some craftable items such as the repair tool that can only be crafted once. And if you crafted them in a previous session, there's a high chance you'll have to do it all again. However, because it's one of the most broken trophies, it's also possible for the trophy to pop before you've actually crafted every item. Technically meaning, even if you crafted items such as the repair tool and the pouch in a previous session, you might actually still be okay. For me, I had crafted both the repair tool and the pouch in a previous play session, so this was not looking too good. But since we had already prepared for so long, we decided to carry on to see if it would work. 
So we grabbed the last remaining rabbit and raccoon skins that we needed before heading back to base. We also traded around some items that the other player may have forgot to grab. For example, I missed the twin berries, so I was given the four that I needed for the poison arrows. Of course, we didn't forget to save just in case this didn't work. And then we got to work, grabbing all the resources and crafted as many items as possible. After a few solid minutes of crafting, I got, and I kid you not, extremely lucky, and the trophy popped with a few items still needed to be crafted. So, I guess you could say luck was on my side. Now that every other trophy in the game had been earned, all that was left to do was to gear up and venture into what we believed would be the sinkhole cave. However, I had died a few times between discovering the caves and grabbing the remaining trophies, which, without me realising, had actually reset all my cave progress I spent hours crossing off. I'm not sure if this was another game-breaking bug, or if this was an intentional feature, but this really threw me off finishing the game, and with only one trophy left, I was completely ready to leave this platinum unobtained, because of how much time I had lost. Just as I was about to give up, I went to save my game, and remembered that for some reason while exploring the caves, I had accidentally made a separate save, while trying to save in my usual slot. So I loaded it up, and found that this save still had every single cave crossed off except for the sinkhole cave. This put me right back where I needed to be, and this was genuinely the luckiest accidental save I had ever created. And honestly, without the save, I'm pretty sure this video would not have been finished. Not wanting to risk any more time, we double checked where Cave 8 actually was, before realising that Cave 8 was actually at the bottom of Cave 7, instead of being the sinkhole cave we originally believed it to be. We ran straight to Cave 7, jumped right down to the bottom, and explored all that Cave 8 had to offer, before reaching a stone-activated door that finally unlocked that lovely platinum trophy. <laughs> So yeah, this game is definitely one of the most botched experiences I've had while going for a Platinum, but after all the setbacks and near failures, I still think this game is actually pretty good. I really enjoyed surviving in multiplayer, and I think that's where this game shines the most. If you're ever going to attempt this Platinum, keep in mind that every trophy is bugged in some way or another, and the trophy grind is definitely better with another person. Thank you all for watching this one. It took a bit longer than expected, and I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!